So welcome to another episode of the Mind Takeaway podcast. We are joining you from Berlin TXL, which is roughly 500 acres on the site of the former Tegel Airport. The site has now been transformed into a new exciting district of the city, which will focus on sustainability and urban technologies. So Urban Tech Republic is already on the site. They're a research and industrial park, and that's already open right now. It's a collaborative infrastructure with laboratories, offices, a production area, and a free space for art, culture, and activism. There's also a wonderful event space that Mira and I have already had good use of at events. I'll give a shout out to Geeka. We've attended how many events there? Maybe two or three up to now. Yeah. yeah. And last not but least, typically Berlin, but there's also a nightclub that's already been launched last month, and that's called Turbulence. So that's also up and running, and people can enjoy that as a cultural space to go and listen to techno. <laughs> and they're like, you know. So in the future, there will be homes built on this massive site. And as I said, it's a new district. So it'll be, you know, a new part of the city itself, even though it's been here for quite a long time. And I think in the future, there's also going to be at least a university campus or two. So Mira, why are we here at TXL Berlin? We are here to record another episode of the Mind Takeaway podcast. And, um, and the episode is about collaboration and, and impact. Although we before did speak about collaboration and impact and system sustainability in different ways, um, this time we wanted to explore how can we activate and facilitate collaboration on a bigger scale between organizations, between communities, between countries, because we will definitely need that in the future. And why collaboration? It's because by collaboration, we learn and grow from each other. We bounce ideas and creativity and innovation are accelerated. It is much faster to achieve something when we when we actually collaborate rather than doing things on our own as individuals, but also as, as individual groups of people, so to say. So where do we start with this episode? What, what are we going to explore? So we need to look at ourselves individually first, I believe, or we believe, when it comes to understanding what collaboration really means, if you want to do it with impact and actually get proper results instead of hot air or ifs and maybes and buts and all of that. And our understanding of what collaboration means to all of us and what is our role in it. Why do we even want to collaborate in the first place? And really, quite often, it can be self-preservation. You know, of course, we want to survive as a species. So it's quite apt that we're on this site today because this site is all about sustainability, not sustaining the bad practices and horrible habits that humans have come up with. Because although we're amazing and we're super creative, and I'll stand by that, we are built to collaborate. We've also, you know, damaged our own ecosystem that we say is an ecosystem, but it's actually our ecosystem that we're, we're not separate from. So it's, it's interesting if we start from that, you know, self-preservation, obviously we want to survive, but we don't want to do that at the detriment to the planet and to other living creatures and natural world, right? So when we collaborate, it really needs to come without fear and egocentric behavior that we're all good at. And really for us to focus is around community, right? Because when we start to focus around community and making things better, not just for one person or one family or one unit as such, or one team, we're looking for the betterment of improving every, you know, things for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, when, when, uh, when we are in fear, when we are in existential fear as, as humans, as individuals, we tend to turn inwards, we disconnect from other people, we, we become quite selfish and hoarding food, money, you know, whatever it is, like during epidemic, hoarding toilet paper. It, it is interesting to see, but the only way for us to survive actually is 
within the community collaborating with other people and that's how we survived as species that's how we achieved what we have achieved but at some point at the beginning of industrial revolution i think we have we have started to become quite even individualistic we have uh, lost that what is very natural to humans to connect and and work together what we are actually doing is quite counterproductive and we need to become aware of it that if we actually want to survive as individuals so collaborating is is quite self-centered self preservation centered but what needs to happen is that the ego uh, needs to get out of it that that part needs to needs to change so we need to first start when we look at a collaboration and how to get better at it how to facilitate it how to thrive from collaboration how to actually achieve through collaboration we need to first start looking you know what it is for us and how is it beneficial for us and start from ourselves yeah couldn't agree more and i think aligned purpose is really important it's an important step so f- for example when something is so complex that you know one person probably can't resolve on their own so aligned purpose i think is important because when purposes are misaligned when we say we were going to do one thing and then we end up our actions are misaligned to that then that gets in the way for sure and also really having clarity of mind around what it is that you want to achieve you know is there a higher purpose not just some sort of goal for your own self interest and that your actions help a group a community a country an organization and it's also not just a short term goal as well although short term goals are fine if it's achieve something great and then you'll have longer term goals to achieve something more complex that's fine and also to be clear about what are your values you know because if you start to misalign away from your values will you really get things done because you'll be kind of going against what you really believe in and it's really about deciding what you want you know we can change our minds we can be wrong it's okay to update ourselves and individuals with new information right and quite often we see in our work that there's lots of misalignment between as i said before saying what you really want and then telling a group that you want to do something and then your actions are completely the opposite or completely different and that just causes miscommunication it causes mistrust you denigrate your credibility and why is it happening that is a really great point and it's not that we are lying we really mean something we really want something and then why do we do something else and so uh it's it probably fear kicks in Uh, and also not probably but for sure fear kicks in and then we go back into what i mentioned earlier this self egoistic self preservation and and also trying to do the right thing is it easy like for example uh, climate action is becoming more trendy and and more people are talking about it there's more initiatives and more things that we can do but it's still difficult to get things done and so when things get hard when we get uncomfortable our brain is kind of wired to go in a um in a line of rest, less resistance but it's uh, but it is also that we have uh as i said before we have grown into this society of uh, self-centered thinking uh, self you know th- there's this great uh, documentary made many many years ago that anybody can actually look into it's it's freely available on youtube and it's called the century of self you know we have created society that is work that is looking first myself and then everybody else or everything else and and also we've seen this in companies you know sometimes companies say they want to um you know we want to improve collaboration we want to be more innovative we want people to work together but then when we look at what is actually happening in the company it is 
um, you know, when we look at KPIs, KPIs are usually in, very individualistic. Your performance is measured uh, individually, not as a group, not through collaboration. So we easily, when things get uncomfortable and hard, we easily slip into the old habits, things that we have learned. So there is lots of unlearning to be done over there. Yeah, for sure. Also, we see in our work when we're helping, be it individuals, teams, communities, organizations to collaborate more effectively, we see that, and this, we're including ourselves, you know, I'm not pointing the finger outside. It, we are guilty of it as well because it is a human trait and actually it's a human trait that's got more prevalent. So people lacking focus and busyness is something that has got much worse since we've increased our reliance on technology. And again, just to be clear, like we've said in many episodes, we are we are fully behind using technology as an as an enabler. However, some technology is definitely getting in the way. Although, you know, controversially, AI is coming up quite often. We've got some episodes coming up in the future, so I won't go too deep into it. But we use, just to be clear, algorithms and AI, even to make this podcast, we use AI sometimes in increasing our ability to do more research in the moment because of a time constraint. But what we're pointing at is when we use them as a emotional crutch, where we feel too uncomfortable to take the step. So we look for a shortcut and going back to focus for a minute, what happens when people have a lack of focus is they end up trying to work on multiple things and they flip flop between different projects, different concepts, different ideas. And we have a problem in society where we don't really measure productivity properly and quite often you get a badge of honor for being busy but no one's measuring the results or the impact of said busyness so the the challenge is and we've been caught ourselves red-handed doing this is that we end up trying to take on too much and and this waters down your impact it it you know it, it disempowers you so what we're saying is if you again aligned to your call to action if you really believe in climate change or or you're currently working for a company that's you know values impact then it's really taking a step back and going okay have i really been focused this week what's got in the way but also not bashing yourself because you you can learn from that experience but it's really noticing what got in the way did i take on too much did i say yes to every meeting and you know Quite often we do that because we feel pressure of maybe someone else in the team, a colleague, a boss, stuff like that. But it really does get in the way because what we notice is people join a million communities, but then they don't really get involved. It looks good, you know, climate change and taking action and having an impact company, let's be honest, is quite trendy at the moment. Nothing wrong with that because it's getting visibility. But the problem with that is that people join lots of different communities. And we've noticed this in Europe, in Berlin, especially locally in Berlin, where people get involved and there's a good good load of people involved in initial events, but then it kind of peters out because the shiny thing wears off, people get bored with it, and then they move on to the next thing. And quite often it cannot even be the community that was at fault. You know, they did a great job, they got good f experience, they've got a good diversity of thought, but again, people want to go on the next shiny event or move on to the next topic that's related to climate change because they got bored with what they were doing. And again, if they've already got a full-time job or working for a company or even working part-time for that matter, they end up just all over the place because they lack the focus and a, they're not able to really apply their attention and get impact and get the results they want. And also it's a commitment problem, isn't it, Mira? You know, if you really commit to something, then you know, as far as we're concerned, you need to see it through. And I can say that, you know, in the past where I haven't been fully committed, I've been semi-committal or non-committal, I get what I pay for. I don't get the results and then it's it's not useful. 
And and so one of the things that 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 comes to mind from listening to what you just said now is that because of the lack of focus, because of the increased use of technology, uh, we have somehow uh, drifted and separated ourselves from from others. And so, but for what we need for collaboration, especially for collaboration, as, as as we started this episode, you know, between larger groups, organizations, countries, even, we need this human connection. We need. We need to be able to develop trust, transparency. We need to communicate and talk to each other. We cannot use messaging for collaboration. Collaboration means we are in something together and we first we develop ideas. So there is a collaboration to develop ideas. There is a collaboration to do something together. There's different ways of collaboration, but we need to uh, spend time together. We need to get to know each other and we need to connect to each other in order to uh, to develop trust and, and, and be transparent with each other. Yeah, I totally agree. And the thing is, yeah, you made a good point there. I mean, it's it's a time-related challenge, right? Because anything good, yes, you know, a big group of people might resolve something really fast. You know, we'll talk about this later where we see collaboration as a non-linear way of resolving something that could be quite complex or quite difficult, right? But to really, truly collaborate within a group or a community or a scale where you're collaborating over multiple countries and all of that stuff... As Mira said, trust, transparency, equity, and diversity of thought are really important. But without applying the right return on investment, which is time, time is one of the most important aspects. We see people run out of patience. We see people say, yes, but I need this done by tomorrow. And we're always like, with respect, yes, but we have to allow enough room and wiggle space and reflection time. And again, some things might be quite easy. They might be easier than you thought to resolve, but quite often complexity is at the forefront. So it requires a lot of moving parts, a lot of discussion. And also, again, when it goes back to um, productivity, productivity isn't being busy all of the time. It may take a long time to reflect and work in groups to, to flesh out the options and the ideas that you can take forward, the ones that are really going to make a difference and change the planet or whatever it is that, you you know, the goals that you're trying to achieve. To collaborate within a group, we really need to have trust, transparency, equity, and diversity of thought needs to be free without restriction. But just to be clear, that doesn't mean that you're just uncontrolled as a group and it's all just messy chaos. You have to have facilitators and you have to, you know, have the respect and clarity around, you know, time. You know, people haven't got all the time in the world and time is of the essence, but it shouldn't, you know, a sense of urgency is good, but not to the point of rushing through stuff. But again, collaboration of thought, allowing every idea on the table, because some of the most ridiculous ideas that seem whimsical or there's no way that's possible usually end up being out of that pile of ridiculous, impossible things that people say. There's something in there that could get traction. And that's usually where there's a spark of something under the collaborative conditions, the right conditions to collaborate. So Mira and I have collaborated within companies. We've collaborated between ourselves. You know, we're collaborating right now to make this podcast. We have collaborators based in different countries that we do our work with, supporting leaders. Um, I'll give you an example. So as a musician, in the past, I've collaborated with individuals and I've been in a band before, so that's a group you could say. And although it was an amazing experience, I would say it was also, quite honestly, deeply challenging sometimes because of my own ego, egos of the other people I collaborated with, fear, uh, miscommunication, and also a misalignment in terms of our wants and needs. You know, I wanted one thing as an artist, or I wanted to take the band in one direction and some of the band members wanted to take it in another and that's okay. So I'll give a shout out to Mando, for example, who was one of my long-term collaborators for many years. We made lots of great music together. 
it was such a wonderful time. You know, if, if I think about it now, you know, it, it's definitely creates some emotion. We had a recording studio together in Newcastle in the UK. Uh, but we also had our moments as well where we didn't agree, but that's okay too. You know, we work through it and we spent time together making us more the power of two rather than individual egos. And what happened was that although that we didn't agree all the time, that friction, although it was uncomfortable sometimes, we just got really used to it. So, you know, we'd have different ideas on what would happen in the session when we were recording a new track or what we were going to do for visibility and work on how we get the music out there or who we're going to work with next and stuff like that. So although it was deeply challenging, it was also deeply rewarding when we were leaned into our own vulnerability and we got to know each other at a really human level. And as Mira said, we listened to each other to really understand their wants and needs, even though sometimes we didn't agree, which is completely fine. And this is the really good point that it's challenging enough to collaborate between two people and a band it's even more complicated but it's raw it's really a, a matter of making sure that you're listening to each other understanding each other and getting to know each other and building trust and transparency and then when things get rocky when things get challenging that's why people end up long-term collaborators because they've got comfortable with each other's you know throw balls wants and needs the things that can piss each other off because it will happen but again they've realized that the sum of the two parts or three parts or five or how many ends up being something beautiful something more amazing creatively something that you couldn't envisage or drive forward on your own and that's what i saw with for, for example mando and the other people i collaborated with that there was these amazing moments where we were like wow okay there's no way i would have got there on my own you know we brought to the table our unique abilities or unique ways of collaborating and how we show, showed up and then whatever comes out the other end you're like wow okay and we see this with teams when they collaborate we see this at scale when communities do it really well and we also see it even over distances where you know people in different countries and different communities come together to resolve a common goal or purpose or a call to action yeah and so in these especially with these groups big groups but as peter said even even in between two people how to make collaboration work is to you really we really need to be aware of our communication learn how to communicate clearly uh, listen to other people is often what we forget because we somehow become very important and our goals and ideas become very important. So we need to kind of learn to let go of it and and see the higher meaning and purpose of it. Everybody need to, need to understand that they have a role, even if that role is not the the main role, but but the part of what they do is really essential for it. Uh, some people are good with starting ideas other people are good developing those ideas some people other people are good with, with taking action with those ideas and so but they're all very important parts and how do we get there is by reflection groups need to we need to reflect as individuals you know what is getting in my way of getting asking for help, collaborating with people, sharing my ideas, being part of something, what is getting in my way, but also what is getting in the way of the group. We need to be able to share feedback with each other without getting, you know, uncomfortable about it and uh, uh, learn what works and why, learn what doesn't work for us as a group and why each group is different, everybody's different, and what is getting in the way. So yeah, I hope this has been an interesting one. And as always, if you've got any questions, but just before we end, we wanted to share that this is more around individuals and small groups. What we're going to talk about in part two will be more at scale. That that is why we're at this site, this wonderful site, TXL Berlin, because this is where collaboration is slowly but surely happening at scale. And that's what we'll explore in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.